Hey everyone, welcome to another session by Simply Learn. In this session, we will learn about ASP.NET Web APIs. Let's look what's in it for you in this session. We'll first start with understanding what is a Web API, followed by which we will look at some of the examples of Web API, and then we will understand why do we use an Web API. Then we will look at some of the important features of Web API and we will see the different version released by Microsoft for Web API. And we will look at some of the difference between ASP.NET Web API and ASP.NET MVC, that is the Model View Controller. Then we will look at the introduction to Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And finally, we have a hands-on demo. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. Watch the video till the end so that you don't miss the demo. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. What is a Web API? The ASP.NET Web API framework is used to create HTTP services that may be accessed by a variety of clients, including browsers, mobile phones, and tablets. ASP.NET Web API is the extension of WCF REST API. In a nutshell, it's a replacement for the WCF REST API. It's compatible with ASP.NET MVC and other web applications, such as ASP.NET Web Forms. ASP.NET Web API is an excellent foundation for developing RESTful apps. So what is this WCF REST API? WCF stands for Windows Communication Foundation is a communication framework that may be used to create web services in .NET. It is secure, dependable, and scalable. It offers a uniform programming model for service-oriented application development. ASP.NET is quite similar to ASP.NET MVC because of its MVC capabilities like routing, controllers, action results, filters, model binders, IOC container, and dependency injection. ASP.NET Web API is an excellent foundation for developing RESTful apps. RESTful apps, that is the representational state transfer, is an architecture paradigm that follows the concepts of REST architecture principles. The concept of resources support the REST architecture. The concept of resources that supports the REST architecture may be the use of resources to express an application state and functionality. Over the HTTP protocol, these resources are identified using URLs. Now let us look at the examples of Web API. The first one is Twitter API. Twitter API allows you to show tweets on your website using the Twitter API. Then we have YouTube API. This allows you to embed videos from YouTube on your website. Facebook API allows to display information from Facebook onto the website. Similarly, we have Microsoft Graph. Microsoft Graph is a collection of APIs that give us information back out of our Microsoft account. Next, we have Azure DevOps. Using Azure DevOps, we can get information about DevOps pipeline using the Azure DevOps API. Cognitive Services. We can use Cognitive Services if we are interested in adding machine learning. PlayFab. PlayFab is a set of APIs for games. Why use an web API? To reach users, a web-based application is insufficient. People use iPhones, mobile phones, and tablets and other devices on a regular basis. These smartphones also come with a plethora of apps that makes life easier. In fact, we are migrating away from the web towards the realm of app. So if you want to expose your service data to browsers and all of these contemporary devices apps in a quick and easy way, you will need an API that's compatible with both browser and devices. Web API is an excellent foundation for making your data and service available to a wide range of devices. Web API is an appropriate platform for developing RESTful applications using the .NET framework because of its open source. Unlike WCF REST API, it uses all of the HTTP features and you don't have to declare any additional configuration for different devices. 
Now let us look at some of the key features of Web API. Features of Web API The ASP.NET Web API platform is suitable for creating RESTful services. The ASP.NET Web API is based on ASP.NET and uses the ASP.NET request response pipeline. HTTP verbs are mapped to method names in the ASP.NET Web API. IIS self-hosted or any other web server that supports .NET 4.0 version or above can host ASP.NET Web API. Different data types are supported by ASP.NET Web API. JSON, XML and different JSON formats are all supported natively. To interface with the Web API server, the ASP.NET Web API framework contains a new HTTP client. HTTP client can be used in ASP.NET MVC server-side applications, window forms applications, console application and other application. Let us look at the different versions of Web API. The first Web API version is 1.0. It is supported by .NET Framework 4.0 and it coincides with ASP.NET Model View Controller 4. The current version of Web API is version 2.0. It is supported by .NET Framework 4.5 and coincides with ASP.NET MVC 5. Let's see the difference between ASP.NET Web API and ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET Web API is used to create fully fledged HTTP service that can only return data and not views. Whereas ASP.NET MVC is used to construct online applications that return both views and data. Web API allows to create RESTful services using the .NET framework and it also enables content negotiation and self-hosting. Whereas in ASP.NET MVC, it doesn't support this. Web API returns data in specific format such as JSON, XML or any other. Whereas MVC only returns data in JSON format. In Web API, the request is translated to actions based on HTTP verbs in Web API. Whereas in MVC, it is mapped to action names. Similarly, Web API is lightweight design that may be used with smartphone apps in addition to web applications. When we have a controller that is both MVC and Web API and want to implement an authorization, we must construct two filters, one for MVC and one for Web API because they both are different. Now let us look an introduction to HTTP. The HTTP protocol can be used to access a web API over the internet. It's framework for creating and developing HTTP-based RESTful services. Hypertext Transfer Protocol is a protocol for retrieving resources such as HTML documents. It is the foundation of any data interchange on the internet. And it is a client-server protocol, meaning that the requests are started by the recipient, which is commonly the web browser text, layout descriptions, photos, videos, scripts, and other sub-documents are fetched, and a complete document is reconstructed for them. CRUD operations can be mapped to the four primary HTTP methods, that is GET, PUT, POST, and DELETE. GET fetches the resources representation at a given URL, and PUT changes the state of resource at a given URL. POST is used to create a new resource and delete removes a resource from a given URL. Hypertext Transfer Protocol is a request response protocol that communicates between a client and a server. A client, that is a browser, sends an HTTP request to the server, which is then responded by the server. The answer may include the requested content as well as the status information about the request. So this is an example of HTTP request. The client submits a request to the server via the HTTP protocol and the server and the web browser respond to the client based on the request. Every HTTP request has three parts, a request line, a request header and a request body. And the request body is optional. Request line defines the method which instructs the server on how to handle the data or resource. 
and the request header contains a request URL which is used to locate the requested resource to the server. It also defines which version of HTTP protocol is being used. This is an example of HTTP response. HTTP response is a server response with the goal of providing the client with the request resources. Now let's have a look at the server's response. This is how the response header status line looks like. The HTTP protocol version, status code and reason phrase are all included. And this is known as status line. And the response header, one or more response header lines can be present and they are used to transmit additional information from the server to the client. The response body contains the resource that client has requested. If the request fails, the response body specifies the cause for the failure, as well as the steps and the client must do to complete the request successfully. Let us see how to set up the development environment. The prerequisite is we need to have Visual Studio installed in our device and .NET software development kit. So let's jump into the browser and see how to install this. First of all, we need to install Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio. To install that, go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and in downloads, go to the downloads and here you can install the community version which is free. So Microsoft Visual Studio is an integrated development environment from Microsoft. It is used to develop computer programs as well as websites, web apps and web services and mobile apps. Then after this, we need to go to .net.microsoft.com. Here you can install the software development kit with the latest version. Scroll down, select your operating system and select the installer which you want to install. And then we need to install the SQL Server Management Studio. Just go to the browser and type download SSMS and it will take you to this website. Here scroll down and you can click here to download free download for SQL Server Management Studio. So after installing these three softwares, you are ready for the demo. Now finally, let us look at the demo. Let's go to the Visual Studio. Open Visual Studio code. I have Visual Studio 2019 installed in my device. So on the left hand side, you can see the recently opened projects. On the right hand side, you have these options where we can clone a repository. In clone a repository, we can get code from an online repository like GitHub or Azure DevOps, or we can open an existing project or a solution. Similarly, we can open a local folder and we can create a new project. So let's create a new project. Here there are many templates. You can explore all the templates. Just scroll down. You have many number of templates. So for this project, we will be using ASP.NET Web Application.NET Framework. So basically, we have two ASP.NET Web Application.NET Framework. One is using Visual Basic and the other one is using C Sharp. So we'll select the one with the C Sharp ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework. Select this and click on Next. Provide the project name. I'll keep the default project name Web Application 9 and you can change the location if you want. So I'll keep the default location and if you want the solution name, you can change it and select the latest framework. So I have the .NET Framework 4.7.2, the recent one. So I'll keep it as it is. And next, click on Create. So here you have the following templates. So you need to select one among these templates. So empty is a template where the, there is no content in it. And web forms. Web forms in ASP.NET is the extend the event-driven interaction concepts to web application. The browser sends a web form to the web server, which responds with a full markup page or a HTML page. All users' actions on the client are sent to the server for stateful processing in web forms. Or you can select MVC. So MVC basically it is a project template for creating ASP.NET MVC applications, model view controller applications. So it allows us to build applications using the model view controller architecture. And similarly, we have Web API. Web API is a project template for creating RESTful HTTP services. 
and we have single page application that is used for creating rich client side javascript driven html5 applications and it is a single page application so that provides a rich user experience which includes client side interactions using html css and javascript so for this project we will select empty and we will check these boxes mvc and web api since we are using a web api here so we'll check these two boxes and and keep the authentication as it is with no authentication don't change it and keep these options as it is and click on create so here we go we have successfully created the project so on the right hand side you can see the solution explorer so before we start with the project i'll explain you the different folders that are present in the solution explorer so first of all we will have the root folder so the root folder is the default root folder for storing the static files related to the project and those files can be accessed programmatically with relative path and similarly we have controller folder the controller folder contains the controller classes where the operation related code is written similarly we have model folder model folder contains the domain or entity classes models can be written anywhere in the solution such as in separate class libraries or folder etc and we have views folder in views folder the view folder holds the razor pages which are responsible for showing and getting the data from the users and we have app settings.json file so this app setting.json folder contains the configuration and secret details of the application and similarly we will have program.cs file so program.cs file in solution explorer it is the file that is the starting point of the application which will create the host for an application to run the application and we will have startup.cs file the startup.cs file allows to configure the behavior of the application such as defining the routes dependency injection so that was about the few of the folders in solution explorer as we go further we will explore other folders in detail so asp.net web api basically it returns data only the data may be from the database and it does not return any view or user interface and the asp.net web api returns data in either xml format or json format so whenever you run an application so suppose if we make an application here and run an application the application start methods get invoked so whenever you run an application the first thing that happens is the application start method gets invoked so where is this method so this method is in global.asx folder let's open this so you can see here application start so as you can see here application start this is the method which gets invoked first whenever we run an application so basically this method checks the routing so as you can see here in this line we have the system object sender the object sender supports all classes in the dotnet framework the class hierarchy provides low level services to the drive classes this is the ultimate base class of all the classes in dotnet framework it is the root of the type hierarchy and we also have event argument it represents a base class for the classes that contains event data and provides a value to use for events that do not include event data we have area registration so area registration provides a way to register one or more areas in an asp.net mvc application and this register all areas this is a register where all areas in asp.net mvc application are registered and we have global configuration dot configure in this line what happens is global configuration provides a global http configuration for an asp.net application and the register route store the url routes for an application and what is this route table so basically route table gets a collection of objects that derive from the route base class and it returns an object that contains all the routes in the collection so now the question is where is the route file so 
To find the route file, go to the app start. Go to this folder. In this folder, we have two files routeconfig.cs and webapiconfig.cs. So, this routeconfig.cs stores the routes and webapiconfig.cs stores the web APIs. So, open this routeconfig.cs. So, this is the file where we have class route configuration. So, as you can see here, route config this is the public class and we have register routes route collection so route collection it provides a collection of routes for asp.net routing and we have the parameter routes dot ignore route so ignore route ignores the specified url route for the given list of available routes and and this class system dot string represents the text as a sequence of code units and we have map route map route maps the specified url route and sets the default route values and returns a reference to the mapped routes similarly we have three parameters that is name url and defaults name is a string and url is the controller we have controller action and id id is optional and default are the objects so we have three objects here controller action and id and we have specified id as optional so basically this route config.cs is the mvc application where the routes are present so now the question is where are the web api routes so the web api routes are in the web api config.cs file so open this file so as you can see here the public static class web api config so we have web api configuration and services and web api routes here so config.routes.map.http route so here the route gets the http route collection associated with this http configuration instance so what is this map http route it map http route maps the specified route template and sets the default route values and it returns a reference to the mapped route it has a string a route template and object default so it has a string named as default api and a route template with api controller and we have default object as id is equal to route parameter which is optional so this id is equal to route parameter optional this is the route parameter class that can be used to indicate properties about a route parameter now we have understood about routes and web apis so now let us go to the controller folder so as you can see this is empty folder but before that we will close these files so go to the controller folder right click and go to add and add a controller and go to web api and here you can see web api to controller empty so here we have five different types of web api controllers one is the empty the other one is web api to controller with actions using entity framework similarly we have a web api controller with read and write actions we have controller with actions using entity framework and with read and write actions for data version v3 so for this project we will select web api to controller empty so select this add it so we need to provide the controller name so we will keep as it is default controller so we'll provide it as default data controller as the controller name so controller is mandatory to be kept in the name and you can change the other part so we have provided the name now let's click on add so this is the default data controller which got created so namespace this is the name of the project and as you can see here with the extension controller so this is the controller which we have created and the name of the controller is default data controller 
So this API controller, it basically defines the property and method for an API controller. So next we'll write a few lines of code here. First we'll call a string, we'll keep it public. String, we'll call the array of string. We'll call it as my data. Is equal so we'll declare some values in the string say data one data two and data three so just randomly I've called some values just to for an example so next we'll call an another string we'll keep it as public public string array array of string then we'll use the get method get data next we'll return this data return my data So we'll save this. Next, we'll click on run. So the build has started. So we need to call the controller, Web API controller, which we created. For that, first enter the API, then slash the controller name. So the controller which we created was default data. Next, connect. So here we go. This is the array of string in XML format. So this was the strings which we created. XML is the extensible markup language. XML is basically used to describe data. The XML standard is a flexible way to create information formats and share structured data via the public internet. So how XML basically works? So it works by providing a predictable data format. XML is a strict on formatting. If the formatting is off, programs that process or display the encoded data will return an error. So with that we have reached the end of this video. Like and share it if you found it interesting. Thank you so much for being here. Keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.